Thanks for hanging out and, and joining Jaron. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I saw some of your work and everything. It's, it's pretty cool. Like, um, what is it that you mainly focus on? Yeah, uh, so I'm a voice actor that focuses primarily on character work. Um, some people know me as Ernest from My Time at Sandrock, um, Puel from Volunteer, Zaffir, Bella Tadama, and Auburn from Experiment Isolation, to, to name a few. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. It's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. So, so you do you do character work, and do you also do direction? Was it like you do like character direction? Is that? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, on top of being a voice actor for a character and stuff like that, I also direct. I um, help direct um, an ADR workout thing. I direct a few series on my, on the side as well, which I can't talk about right now. But uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of NDA in there. Yeah, yeah. Mm zip that up <laughs> gotcha gotcha well yeah thanks for joining um yeah i pretty much just kind of like like to chat back and forth and um a lot of um kind of people that follow me and everything and through baka bros um so like we're making our own game but we're also i like to be a resource for people coming into industry and everything and i think it's just so cool being able to like talk with people um and just kind of have their their like advice or expertise and everything um just kind of help people get in and um yeah, yeah. I, I i heard from vera that like a lot of people especially in voice acting like really like to help each other out and and that kind of thing as well give each other advice yeah absolutely um you know uh people in the community are very very inviting and welcoming and supportive i know that some like actors um, they have this kind of stigma where they're like, oh, they're so pretentious and so full of themselves. <laughs> but the part of the community I'm in is nothing like that. It's everybody's lifting each other up. Everybody's so supportive. I see role announcements everywhere and comments and comments of people being like, congrats, good job. Oh my God, you're amazing. And it's, it's just a really, really nice community to be a part of because, you know, you just have that support behind you whenever you go. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it it's it's so competitive with especially like in the um the game dev scene like if there's like game dev jobs people will just like flock to them and it's like you see like a thousand entries which i'm sure is similar to va but i feel like there's a little bit more dog eat dog in uh in games <laughs> i mean definitely it's this it is a very competitive field and sure it might be like oh, i want that i want that role mm. i want that role so bad but when it's all said and done it's more like well there's other opportunities out there. I think I think some of us um, forget the fact that there's so many more opportunities out there. Yeah. And that there's a there's a chance for all of us out there. We just need to keep working, keep grinding towards it. And you know, I mean, I found my way to where I am now. So yeah, the same can be said for anybody else out there. That's true. That's cool. So how did you get into like voice acting work? Um, yeah. Okay. So I started in September of 2019. Um, but that was really just stemmed from an interest of video games and anime from a very young age. Um, and for some reason, I was very interested in the behind the scenes aspect of video games and anime, more so than playing the game itself. I would always look up who voiced who and stuff like that. And part of me was like, I can do I want to do this. And I come from a background that's not so typical of normal voice actors because I was mm. actually a baseball player for 12 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the goal before voice acting was be a professional baseball player. Sure. But uh, that got cut short in my senior year of high school when I got cut. And so I really had to find another thing to do with my life because I didn't want to just sit around all day. Right. So I went back. I took a look at my interests. And I was like, oh, I like video games and anime. And I remember this interest in voice acting. So I was like, hey, I got nothing else to do, buy a mic, and that pretty much just started it. And I just started auditioning, auditioning, and like I said before, it led me to here. <laughs> so awesome. crazy what a, like a going down from like a bad moment in my life to building up a new like foundation towards something new. That's so cool. So when do you, when do you start voice acting? Like you look pretty young, so. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I'm 20, and wow. I started uh, three years ago when I was 17. So it was, I was a pretty young faced new guy on the scene and yeah. I'm still that, I still consider myself to be the young new faced guy because everybody thinks I'm older but <laughs> I'm actually, and, they're, and they're always surprised when I tell them 
I'm 20. No doubt. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I get it a lot, but you know what? I'm gonna take that youth as my advantage. Yes. You know what? I have so much time, and I'm like just gonna keep going with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I I think that a lot of people do kind of have that notion and everything when um when they see someone's like young into something and everything they you know but like people i don't know i, I think age is always just a number and people mature at different rates yeah. um yeah. yeah yeah for sure i mean yeah just because i'm young i wouldn't see myself as this like super mature or super immature guy i feel like <laughs> i can hold my own yeah but yeah I, I know when to ask for help i know when to i can do this on my own stuff like that Totally. It's more just being self-aware about where you are mentally, physically, wherever you're at in your career. So mm -hmm. I really don't think age is that much of a factor yeah. because, you know, I know people of all ages that do this type of thing. So, yeah, it's just where you see yourself, you know? Yeah, totally. I think that it stems from a lot of times because people um, kind of find out um, what they want to do, I guess, at different parts of their life and everything. And I know a lot of people who still don't know what they want to do in their 30s, you know, and so kind yeah, of that just yeah. that just happens. You know, <laughs> um, look, I mean, people find their interests whenever like it just dawns on them. And, you know, I mean, the whole voice acting thing started when I was basically 17. And part of me wishes I could do it earlier. But you know what? I just can't change that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you did some cool work. Yeah, I was, I was sifting through your stuff off your, on your website. And um, yeah, I it looks really cool. I even like the what you have here, like the raw studio sample. I think it's really cool for um like okay what kind of quality am i gonna get, gonna get i can tell that they're talented but how is their how is their studio you know you don't want yeah. white noise in the background and all of that that's and i see you have annoyment as well <laughs> yep i do it's it's the 103's younger brother it's the 102 but yeah that that uh that studio sample thing i mean that's pretty much just uh a standard you need to have when you're yeah remote because how else are they going to know what you sound like? Yeah, you can have an amazing demo, but that's mixed and everything is, you know, processed. But how are they going to know what you sound like raw? So totally. If yeah. Anyone, anyone new listening out there, get a raw sample going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that was really cool. Just like this is like my my loud voice or this is my yelling. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's it's really important. Uh, just kind of see yeah. what you're going to get, especially because, yeah, like there's so much more remote work now um mm -hmm. than ever like there's you're not like really going to a studio unless you're part of like an industry or a part of like a company or whatever you know um specifically and even then they might even have like equipment at your house or something i've i've, yeah. I've heard a lot of stuff mm -hmm. like that like yeah it, <laughs> I, I remember um so i had some nda work and i had to make sure they had to like I had to take, take pictures of like my whole zone, my whole like work area and everything. So they had, wow. like knew that I was like face toward the wall and like wow. no one could like walk through and just accidentally see the NDA stuff. And it's just like, it's important. <laughs> when it's well, remote. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never had to do anything like that, but I mean, yeah, NDA is pretty serious. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was working. I was working on a uh, kingdom hearts. Um, it, oh, nothing, really? So, so, Sick. Sorry. Sora from Kingdom Hearts for Smash, and that was, uh, wow. yeah, that was, um, yeah. That's <laughs> can, dope, oh my god. Yeah, I can now say that, now that it's, it's finally out and everything, but that was one of the hardest things to keep keep down. <laughs> Good stuff, though. Jeez. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so I was helping, like, uh, do a lot of the QA work and everything, and making sure that, like, there was no, like, crazy bugs for Sora, and there were some crazy bugs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hey, sure. but that, that's one hell of a character, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Good stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, now that now we're like full time indie, and it's it's exciting to be here as well. It's it's been a lot. Yeah. Of, it's been a lot of fun. Um, but as, as far as your direction work and everything, what kind of like what kind of things do you typically do for direction? Like, do you just work directly with an actor? Kind of like talk about pitch and. Like, how does that work? Okay. Um, I do two types of directing. I do live direction with, like, in sessions with voice actors, and I'm also a casting director. Okay. There are two, there are two different types of directors, and there's two different types of philosophies that you have to put towards them. When it comes to voice direction and um, live sessions with actors, when you have the material in front of you, when you have your actor with you, the job, the main job of a director is how do I get from point A to point B? You need to get... You need to find a way to get the right intention across, and however yeah. that may be, you need to find a way to explain that to the actor 
and help them get to that um, end point. Because as a director, you're the one leading the ship. And it's, it's pretty much all your call. And your actors, your engineers, everything, they need to understand what you want mm. so that they can get them, so that they can get you what you want. Right. And every actor, every engineer, every so-and-so person is different. So I can have an actor, I can tell them like in a scene, I can relate that scene to something that they've lived through. So it's, it's kind of like trying to find experiences um, that are relatable and that actors can dip into so that they can get that scene across. For example, if I were to do like a romantic confession scene with an actor, I'd be like, well, have you ever confessed to someone before, like in high school, whenever? And if they'd be like, yeah, I'd be like dip into that and think back at that moment and really put yourself in that moment again for this scene specifically. And with a little bit of, you know, more direction and uh, um motivation for them hopefully we can get to that um end goal of that scene totally no that's cool yeah. Yeah, kind of like thinking about something that happened in your life that helped you pull out that emotion that's it yeah it's really cool yeah yeah and it, it's it really being <laughs> being remote and having to self-direct yourself as well it really helps um you know tweak those skills as a director because i use those self-direction skills to help me direct other people as well totally. because it's what helps me and I find it to help others as well. And, you know, being knowledgeable about what you want, being having a clear picture of what you want. You can't be like, oh, I, I just want to have it this type of feel. That doesn't really help. <laughs> I wanted to have, you wanted to have something that's a clear picture in your mind so you know exactly what you want. Yeah. And directors that have that clear vision, that clear view and knowledge on what they can get, can get some really good work out of their uh, their actors and their engineers and whoever they're working with. Totally. Yeah. Like, I was trying my best uh, when I was working with Risa May uh, for, for Malaboy, um, one, one of my first characters. Um, I, I felt like, because I had already had two other voice actors for other characters, um, like a pirate character and like a redneck character. And so I kind of, I kind of, I don't know, th those characters have big, bold personalities and like, and I want all my characters to have a lot of like draw from that like theme really well um but like i don't know I've, I've always liked the idea of acting and i act as a kid and everything but like it's really hard to kind of know what i'm thinking or like how to express what i'm thinking when i'm like comes to actors and like it's it's like this but it's yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah uh I, I i understand that completely that happens to me sometimes when directing people sometimes just being as uh short and simple to the point is honestly the best you can do because okay. if you're just struggling to you know try to find ways to connect points to each other it's just you're not you're just making the picture more unclear for yourself and to the actor so totally as long as it's like something that's tangible and something that can mm -hmm. be clearly seen no matter how short it is i feel like that's better a better way to go about it than trying to struggle through points and give them like these long uh, drawn out stories to you know try and dip into that makes sense. So when you're doing cast directing, um, how, like, is that when you like, you just like pull in a bunch of people for a role and, and you kind of sift through demos or do you like, would you typically, um, would they have like lines? Cause I know Vera was saying like having a couple lines would be good for a character to kind of, um, get a read off of everyone, how they would, you know, you know, like have, how they would voice a character, I guess you having a couple lines is really helpful versus just having their just their demo and kind of seeing their range. Right. Um, so yeah, as a casting director, um, to really get that type of feel that you want for the character, I feel like for me, it's best to you know draft up a casting call, have all the characters available, and have lines with scenes, uh, so that you can really hear one the actor's ability, two if they can properly get that scene and emotion out of them and then three if their audio quality is good mm -hmm. uh, because like i said before with their demo if you if you just do a demo drop yeah they can be a great actor but you have no idea what their sound is like at true the, the hardware but so it, it's a it's having a demo poll it's not a terrible idea if you're like on a, like a tight deadline mm -hmm. but really having that luxury of people auditioning and reading for your characters, it helps give you that, um, you know, more fleshed out read, more totally. fleshed out feeling of that actor if they're, a if they're able to get what you want. Because at, at the end of the day, 
you know what you want and hearing all these people auditioning you're able to find out which actor is best suited for the role absolutely that's really yes yeah, that's, that's good advice yeah that's really cool yeah i i think i should do that for my for my upcoming characters and everything i like i've had really good experiences in the past with my voice actors and i think i i got very lucky with um my <laughs> you know like like people that contacted me and everything and i'm like that just sounds awesome and you have the range i'm looking for for this character even though i didn't know what i was doing as well i felt like they were still solid solid picks and they did a great job oh, on, on the work and um i don't know i just love helping support like um talented people and in, in all ranges of talent you know it's so no, fun yeah, of course of course <laughs> I, I mean i i bet i saw your you know your call the voice actors on twitter and i was like i was on it immediately but i knew <laughs> that you're gonna be flooded and flooded <laughs> with people are you still going through that list by the way i <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because i had a feeling <laughs> oh man i still have probably probably like almost 100 dms i just haven't even addressed yet and i feel bad for like <laughs> this has been such a long time throughout and i'm just like it was just so overwhelming because i'm like i'm trying to you know actually make the characters and like and do like the the levels and everything so i'm like developing the game and i'm trying to also pull time into like figuring out who's gonna voice them and Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I understand that completely. When I made my roster like a like a month or two ago, I got 300 plus audition uh, applicants in one day. So, oh, I had to dedicate man. like a day or two to get through everybody and, you know, it's a time, but once you get everything like set up and everything, it's very satisfying because you now you have a good pool to select from, you know? Totally. It's it's a good deal. So, it was hey, as it, long as you're willing to put in the time, so yeah oh, sorry, no you're good uh what was the roster for that nda project or is that for something else oh no, no no uh the roster that i put up is for my personal talent roster that i'm using for casting gigs that i get uh um assigned to oh and cool fortunately i've been assigned to cast several projects which i can't talk about uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh i'm excited to get uh going on those projects and casting them as well so that's got some awesome. good stuff going. So you're trying to get like a talent pull up so that when you when you have projects like that, you're able to like, okay, you're probably good for this, you're probably good for this kind of thing. You already kind of know. Yeah. It's yeah, I have like a talent pool. I made them fill out like their info and stuff like that. And, you know, for example, I made them select whether they're good for paid and unpaid projects because I know there are people who do passion projects out there mm -hmm. that are fairly solid. But, you know, I know voice acting is a business for some people and they, you know, they want to make money. So I wanted to make clear, like, hey, are you guys okay with paid or unpaid? And then whoever filled out which determines which ones to get those projects. Because totally. if I get a paid casting call, yeah, I can send them to everybody. But if I get an unpaid casting call, right. I can't really send them to the ones that want paid uh, paid work. So yeah, you gotta put that into thought, you know. That makes sense, and and I and I know there's a lot of um, I don't know, I I feel like there's stigma against some unpaid work because I feel like everyone should get compensated for their time. Um, in their in their efforts and everything, um, and like I, I heard from like Vera, like if you don't charge enough, then it kind of like cheapens like everyone else's work and everything as well. Like you don't want to like undercut other people, you know, because it's kind of yeah. like a give and take. Um, yeah, that's that's been yeah. a bit of an issue in the VA industry for yeah. quite a while. People undercutting, charging less for their services just so they think they can get the role. Sure. But, you know, that's that's more of a, you know, a conscious thing that some people do. Totally. And I understand why people look down on that. But it's when I see projects with low budgets or with no budget at all, yeah. I tend to look at the project itself as a whole and be like, well, they're not undercharging for no reason. They just have no budget. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not giving they're not giving any pay, not because they don't want to pay them. They just have no money. Right. And it's more just it's more of a self-awareness thing on the voice actor themselves is is this project worth my time i can see that because if it's like yeah it's an unpaid project but if it's not something that you want to do don't do it yeah. but if it's like an unpaid project that's really cool looking and something that you want to be in i got no problem with people going a part of those projects you know do what you want and hey that's your call and if it turns out to be a bad project or not uh, take that to the next project. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I guess it's good in the fact that you can get your name out there, you know, on on those projects that like maybe are less competitive because you're not paid, and so like you're able to like kind of okay, I can finally get a part because you know I don't have a portfolio to show yet, you know, and 
that could yeah, be that especially could be good. especially when people are starting out. Yeah. Um, unpaid and you know low budget work. Sometimes you really don't have a choice, and yeah. all, to, the only way to get those experiences and to get that kind of knowledge in the industry, I mean, sometimes you have to kind of dip into that. And you know what? For people that's just starting out, there's no shame in that. But hopefully, as time goes on and you evolve in your career, you'll have that kind of you know. I know what my worth is now. I know how to charge myself, charge myself properly for projects that want me or want my rates. Right. Because you know, if you're just gonna undercharge yourself, if a casting director knows the rates and see you undercharge yourself, they're just gonna throw you out. And、mm-hmm. because they're like, oh, they're just undercutting themselves so they can get the part. And、mm, you know that's not a good that's not a good look.、Um, but yeah, there are people out there that purposefully undercharge talent, and you know it's、yeah. kind of a scummy thing. But that's how that's how it's become these days. <laughs> you just have to you know keep a lookout on what they're paying you, what they want you to do. Just take a like vet the entire project <laughs> and determine whether it it is worth your time to go in. I wanted to ask your opinion on longer form projects because I, I've had、um, an easier time of it because it's very much like a champion based game. If you think of like League or Overwatch, where you know they might they have a set number of scenarios and they have a set number of lines per scenario, and so for me it's only like two three pages max.、Um, but for a game that's like a lot of story involved, an RPG kind of thing or something like that, where there's a lot more voice acting. Do you think it should like? Because I've I've heard that's like okay if you do like two fifty an hour for instance as like a maybe a baseline for some people, right?、Um, would that make as much sense if you're doing a longer form project like a something that you know you're gonna get a lot of time from kind of thing? So when it comes to that, when it comes to RPGs and longer forms of games, two、mm-hmm. fifty an hour is the minimum.、Mm-hmm. So. If you're gonna, if if like a company with a good budget is gonna come to you with a longer form game, I would probably expect that two fifty an hour. Like I wouldn't expect、yeah. anything less. If anything, I would expect more. Okay. Um, if you're gonna get that type of project handed to you, like a long term, like months and months of recording, because you know they have a longer script for you. They have this fully fleshed out character for you. So okay, I mean two fifty an hour. Since that's the industry minimum right now, that's really what you're gonna expect out of that type of project.、Um, totally okay. Yeah, I mean that.、Um, I would expect like good things from that project if they're giving you two fifty an hour. Also, so <laughs> from the from the surface it looks good. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean even even as an indie, like you know, I I try to uphold. Uphold that kind of standard as well, and um. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I had to charge my laptop. My bad. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of like as an indie, I still try to like uphold that. So like, you know, I'm basically mostly out of pocket for a lot of my talent. Um, and so it it becomes like, kind of a game of okay, like how much can I allocate toward voice acting versus like programming and r- rigging and everything? Because I'm not like a A one-trick wonder, right? Like I hire out for different roles, and I basically do design the art for my game,、um, you know, and, and I guess direction. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, and it's it's、so. a lot of the thing is you gotta figure out how to split up, how to spend your money, and you、yeah. know, sometimes some of the budget isn't be, isn't able to be stretched out far enough. So, I mean, it's it's whether or not like which one is willing to take that cut. And that's gonna be a hard conversation to have. So, oh, I know.、Um, <laughs> you just need to have that budget prepared, because you know you don't want to have that tough conversation with some people being like, "Hey, it's gonna be a little hard to pay." <laughs> <laughs> that's I haven't wanted to have that conversation. So I I usually、yeah. am like ready for okay, I'll allocate maybe like、uh, an hour a page kind of thing because I have when I when I, I have in the past I've had like okay. If we could record like two versions of each line, just so I, and I can pick like you know, the best version. That's kind of how I ran it. I don't know if that's the best、yep. way, but it it seems to work pretty well.、Um, and if they're both good, then I might use both of them just because as variants kind of of the same line. <laughs> yeah,、know. I mean your way is your way is a、uh, is a way to direct people. I know directors that want like two or three takes of each line. I've worked with directors that just want one take.、Mm. So it's just it's basically just how you want to run it. 
like I said, it's how you want to get from point A to point B. And if that's how totally. you want to go about it, doing two, three takes a line, hey, go for it. Totally. Are, are there any things that you would... I don't know, is, is there any kind of advice you'd give? I guess we talked about this a little bit before, um, but like for people that are just trying to get in and like any kind of like websites or or like links, I, I, I might be able to like have any links in the bottom uh, for on the description and everything of uh, this video um, for anyone trying to get into kind of what you're doing, I guess. Um, yeah, so um, for voice acting specifically, um, you just got to do it. And... Uh, I know some people because personally I've had people come up to me and ask how do I how do I do voice acting I want to try it out I'm like you just have to do it and <laughs> because they're like oh, I'm I'm nervous I'm do it I promise you'll have a good time uh, <laughs> and uh, as far as um, places to go uh, I'm sure Vera has has said that Casting Call Club is a great site for people just starting out yeah and just trying to find roles to you know get and practice with Casting Call Club yeah. The Voice Acting Club Discord server has a great resource of um, casting calls that you can go. It's both paid, unpaid, whatever, original work as well. Some good projects have, have uh, come across that server. Um, let's see. What else can I pull up here? Um, oh, just going around on Twitter, being a part of the community. Um, yeah, Twitter seems to a, be... There's a, there, there is a Twitter page just dedicated solely on retweeting paid casting calls let me get that for you that's cool it's called i think it's va retweet va uh, retweet let me, see. let me see it here uh va casting call retweet that's I'm cool for you right here they have a paid and unpaid version let me see if Thank i can you. find the unpaid one yeah any links you can send me i'll definitely have in the description below even if it's the same as vera's or like if in duplicate yeah. itself yeah of course and then oh right that's a good resource to have um <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. There it is. A old castmate of mine made a huge resource of where to find auditions and opportunities and stuff like that. A lot of them do require that you have a demo of some right. sort, but for people that do have demos and stuff like that, it's a great resource. Um, let me find it for you. Thank you. Um, appreciate that. It was, here we go. I've it's I've by, heard of uh, sorry go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, it was, it's the resources by um a friend named Sam Slade. So Sam Slade. anyone interested in following uh her, go ahead. Sam Slade, okay. <laughs> uh, she's a great talented voice actress that I've worked with before, and a good person to work with. I will say. That's awesome. I, I've heard uh, of like yeah. ACX like for audiobooks. I'm not sure if everyone's into audiobooks, but that's. A thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's one of the bigger audiobook uh, opportunities sites for auditions. I'm not personally into audiobooks, but yeah. I've heard people that work on them and they have no complaints about it. So, hey, if no one else has complaints about it, I <laughs> I put them up there for opportunities. Cool. Um, oh, and one one that I wanted to talk about as well is yeah. the Dev Talk Discord server. Yeah. Um, it's a Discord server uh, dedicated for having indie game devs for pitching their games. And I'm not sure if you know about um, visual novel jams, but um, there's no. certain times of the year um, where game devs come together and form, you know, indie teams to make a visual novel that's um, related to the genre that the jam is um, presenting. Okay. And for this for this uh, jam, it's Spooktober, so it's going to be all horror and Halloween related stuff. Sweet. And there what's been going on in that server is people have been going into um the recruitment pages and be like hey we need so 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 and so for this project we need voice actors we need a uh, music composer we need a programmer and that's just another that's really cool. good way for voice actors to get work because these these game developers need voice actors for those characters so totally i'd say it's a really good source for that and also for people other parts in the creative um page of of work that want to get um specifically into game dev work totally uh, that was dev talk just, was it yes dev talk let me get it for you right now thank you yeah because i almost everyone who follows me is either a developer or just an enthusiast <laughs> yeah you know and uh, let me get it here let me get one that doesn't expire <laughs> oh that'd be cool <laughs> there we go link thank you so much for your 
for your resources here. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Hey, we're here to lift each other up because there's no point in beating anybody down because that'll only bring us down. You know? Totally. Yeah, I, I agree. That's So I've been like streaming game development stuff, content lately, and I'm just like, I used to actually make Udemy tutorials and I liked that because it was like kind of like some faster money off of sales, but then I'm like, I spend so much money on, on school and like learning all this stuff. I think it'd be really cool just to be a affordable resource, right? Like basically just like... No, yeah. Here, I feel you know? that. I really <laughs> feel that. I, I'm not like a qualified teacher or anything, but I've got some good advice that I can give some people. And totally. people that want that advice, I'm willing to give it to them for like not as much money or no <laughs> money at all compared to some people out there that are going to charge like, hey, take take this $1,000 course and I'll tell you, go to this website for auditions. I can yeah. tell you that for free. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not as worried about competition as I am just like, I want to see more awesome games out there. That's my... Yes, that's yes. For me. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. Because right. if there's more awesome games out there, that means it's going to motivate more people to make more awesome games. Yes. And also, as a side thing, more voice acting work. That's true. <laughs> that's, true. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, so so I'll, help, I'll help train the devs so they can give more awesome <laughs> VA work for everybody. There we go. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Look, I, I want these games to be amazing. And I'm, I'm slightly biased because I'm a voice actor. But if there's like really good voice acting in games, that just hits like a really good spot for me when it comes to that game. And totally. games like... Persona 5, um, oh, man. recently yeah. Valorant, Genshin. Those games have stuck with me because of their voice acting. So good. It's, like, it's more like it's if there's no voice acting, in my opinion, it feels like there's something missing. And part of me being like, I want this to be a great experience. And maybe I've gotten, maybe I've gotten spoiled with my game experience or whatever, but having that element of voice acting there it just gives a new level of immersion that just sucks me into the game so having good voice acting it's really really helps like make a game shoot up to the next level i totally agree yeah, yeah. awesome <laughs> well Jaron, thank you so much for your time dude yeah this has been awesome <laughs> no of course thank you for having me appreciate it <laughs> absolutely